What's up everybody, welcome back to Nintendo Land. Last week we had a video showcasing Pyrim's Mario Maker 2 Mario 64 boss battles. Yes, that's a lot to take in, but this week we have Mario Sunshine boss battles and Mario Maker 2. And this is once again by the same creator, Pyrim. Their code is in the description down below if you want to check out these levels before you see them. But thank you guys so much for tuning in today. I'm going to go through each level and talk about how it references the boss and show you guys the boss as well. So let's dive straight on into it. So first we have a little area of Bianco Hills until we get to the bridge where we see the polluted piranha plant. This is really cool, it looks like it's throwing up goop and fire at Mario as blocks and fireballs are coming out. Mario's job is he has to hit the bottom of the falling block out of its mouth in order to create a vine for him to climb up and hit the pow block in order to defeat it. Next up, we climb the giant windmill and we see Petey at the top. Once we enter, we fall all the way down to the bottom of the windmill just like Mario Sunshine. To defeat Petey, you have to collect the red coins all over its body and then eventually you get to watch all the water go into its mouth, which is actually pretty cool. Next we have the first fight with Gooper Blooper. You have to get to the completely other side of him and underneath the water knock off one of his tentacles. This will then allow you to go up to the front and knock off its mouth the same way you do in Mario Sunshine as you pull it and rip it off. It's kind of brutal but that's how you take him down. Next up is Petey Piranha 2. This time he's flying all over Bianco Hills outside of the tower and it's your job to throw different shells and items into its mouth in order to blow it up multiple times. And what's so cool about this is the items will change. You'll start off with a Buzzy Beetle shell and then a Koopa Troopa shell and then even a bob -omb, which completely changes how you have to toss the weapon. I just think it's really cool. Next they threw in a couple portions that were just cool to have that weren't necessarily bosses like the sandbird level we had to collect the coins on the sandbird. Thank you. 
And they also included the blooper race. As you can see, there's three bloopers to choose from, and obviously you can race with them on this water as you follow this big one on this path. And we have yet again another gooper blooper fight. This time you have to jump up and keep hitting its top tentacle in order to turn the on and off switches, well, on and off, until eventually it allows you to move the snake blocks over and knock off its lips. Next up we have Monty Mole in his cannon, and this one's really cool because you have to throw the bombs like you're throwing into the cannon hole, just like the game. You have to throw him up and inside where he's poking his head out of until you eventually can blow him up to get the key. Now we have the giant angry wiggler from Gelato Beach. Now this guy was very tricky for me at first and I could not quite figure out what I was supposed to do, but it's very unique. In the game you have to rise sand castles underneath them to make them fall over so you can ground pound in the stomach. This time you have to ground pound all the question blocks to give yourself a path in order to hit the switch to kill the wiggler. Okay, here we have another polluted piranha plant. Your job, hit the block, climb the vine, and hit the pow block without getting hit by the poto boot. Next we have a fight with Monty Mole all the way on the top of Noki Bay, and you had to throw bomb bombs across the chasm without falling in. And you could throw them on the treadmill in order for them to go inside of the tank from the bottom this time around, which I think is very unique and I thought it was really cool. One of my favorite bosses from Super Mario Sunshine was the Mecha Bowser fight from Peanut Park. I just thought it was so unique to be on a roller coaster shooting missiles at a giant robot Bowser. I mean, come on, it sounds like fan fiction. And here, this is not quite the reimagine. I would have thought it would be more of a path that you had to ride over and over again and hit specific spots of the Bowser. But this time, you're in a clown car shooting fireballs and you're kind of just shooting up this giant Bowser and breaking different parts in order to get four keys.
And yep, we have Gooper Blooper again. This time you go throughout all the tentacles and just knock off the ends of each tentacle by collecting the red key coins, which is pretty cool. And eventually you get to watch an animation of the mouth falling off, even though I got blasted as watching it. This one took me a little bit to understand what boss battle it was replicating, but this is Phantom Manta. Now, if you know anything about Phantom Manta in the game, it breaks into many different pieces as you defeat it, and this one is kind of doing that. There's two pieces that are flying back and forth, and a whole bunch of pieces that are kind of rolling across the ground that actually can't touch you, but some of them can. It's kind of confusing. I don't know. I got kind of confused by the ground itself. I didn't know what could hurt me and what couldn't. But your job is to hit the power blocks and kind of break them into pieces until all the power blocks are gone. Now we move on to the boss battle with Ely Mouth. This one was so dreaded in the original Super Mario Sunshine, and this one could be very difficult as well. You fall down in this dark ocean, and you can't really see anything around you until you start collecting coins and different things around. Now, this one actually makes you think of how to defeat it, because it's very tricky. You go into the mouth of the eel, as you can see the two stars being the eyes with the bumpers, but you realize you'll need something to burn the ice. Your job is to get a Yoshi, burn the ice, and find a spiked ball, and throw it at the inside of his mouth in order to kill it. Next we have King Boo in the casino. This was very, and I mean very clever to me. You have Yoshi and your job is to spit back spiked balls at its tongue like you would do the peppers in the game. But you have to wait for you to actually get the peppers. For instance, you have to wait for the spiked balls and it'll throw different things at you. Like maybe you get some coins, maybe you'll get an enemy, maybe you'll get some fireballs, different things to kind of distract you. And this was so good. You even have the treadmill that moves below your feet like you did in the game with the spinning arena. This was like one of my favorite recreations because it's so accurate and so unique.
Next up, we have a battle with Bowser Jr. underwater. Yeah, I don't quite get this reference, and I've been thinking really hard about it because I don't think we ever battled Bowser Jr. Maybe this was just like a unique thing that they added, but I don't get why we're underwater. I don't get the whole aspect. Maybe somebody knows. I don't know, but um, it's still fun. Nevertheless, you have to hit him three times while you're underneath the water to eventually escape this room, and then you get into a weird phase where I guess you're chasing Shadow Mario down a hallway, and you have to kind of escape and beat him to the end as enemies are coming out of blocks that he's triggering. I don't really understand once again what's exactly going on, but you know, it is Bowser Jr. Shadow Mario. I get it's kind of hard to replicate that in Mario Maker, so I get that. And finally is the boss battle with Bowser and Bowser Jr. in a hot tub. Yes, it was so weird when it actually happened in Sunshine, but this is really cool. You got bullet bills chasing you like the game, and you have to hit the ends of the bathtub to blow them up in order to, you know, kind of make Bowser Jr. and Bowser fall down all the way to the surface, which I think this is executed extremely well. You even have the snake blocks looking like the green goop that's in the hot tub, and uh, you even have the little bouncers that were kind of like the floaties in the hot tub. This is just really well made. And that is it. You get a little picture of a Pianta at the end, which I think was pretty cool. Um, but that is the Super Mario Sunshine bosses in Mario Maker 2. Make sure you follow Pyrim to see the other great boss battles they created. And if you guys like this again, I will go on and look at the other video games that they created boss battles for. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you liked this video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to stay up to date on all things Nintendo, all things Mario Maker 2 in general. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you all on the next one. See you guys.